Welcome to the Self Care 101 podcast with your host, straight talking life coach, Pooja McClymont. This show provides simple self development, supporting you to embody your self worth so that you can live the happier, more fulfilled life that you deserve without burning out. Thank you so much for listening today. Hello, it is season two, episode nine. In today's show, I'm going to talk about taking chances, taking risks. Why are we still waiting for some miracle to occur? Why are we waiting for a genie to appear or to win the lottery in order to really live our lives? Why are we still waiting for fairy tales? Do we really need to wait for a man to have a baby we so desperately want to have? How much more saving will we need to do whilst we're in a dead-end job until we buy the house that we want? What's really stopping us from traveling the world? Apart from COVID, obviously. Abraham Maslow was an American psychologist who's best known for creating Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It's a theory of psychological health predicated on fulfilling innate human needs and priority, culminating in self-actualization. Now, this is something that a lot of counselors, psychotherapists, coaches and stuff, we will study this theory because it's quite, it's quite when I say it's profound I mean it's very very relatable to all of our lives and it's literally shaped in a pyramid now his theory states that once we've met our basic needs that's when we can move towards fulfillment so at the bottom of this pyramid are our basic needs which constitute the physiological needs like water food warmth and rest now I'm pretty sure a lot of us are stuck here I mean how are we resting nowadays we're struggling right and eating right we're struggling Then it goes into our safety needs, which includes safety and security. And essentially a lot of us, most of us live here. And this is the basis of our stress because we're constantly trying to, you know, get the money, get in, be in a good job, save the money to be able to do more things and, you know, get the promotion and just, you know, we're just constantly in this sort of space. We don't almost allow ourselves to appreciate what we've achieved at a certain point and sort of bask in that glory. The pyramid then goes on to belongingness and our love needs, esteem needs, and then self-actualization where you fulfill your potential, including creative activities. Now in my practice, I pretty much follow this structure with my clients because most of them are only at the basic needs level, which is completely understandable. Now, we're not told to dream beyond childhood, if you're lucky. After that, it's pretty much just messaging of not enough. Hard work, once you do this, then you can do that. And choices that aren't really choices, then obviously fear, fear, and more fear. So in this show, I'd like to help you take some chances in a considered way so that you can move your life beyond surviving and into thriving. So let's get to it start with just getting very clear about what I'm talking about. So taking chances, taking risks. I'm not talking about jacking it all in and doing things in a non-sensible way because that's not how we're wired, okay? We do want a level of safety and security. I don't know many people who just wing it and hope for the best and life works out for them. I just I just don't know those sorts of people. And to be honest with you, I generally work with high achievers and high achievers tend to be perfectionists and very organized. Everything's a spreadsheet or a list. So <laughs> if you're one of those people, jacking it all in is just not going to work for you. I mean, it's a nice idea, don't get me wrong, but we live in a world where we need money to do anything. So there's going to always be a level of planning involved. So what I'm talking about here is taking chances, but taking considered chances. So you have to do some prep work. You've got to weigh things up and and then take those chances. But what I want to stress here is that we let fear, we let self-doubt, we let other people's opinions, we let society's version of what your life is supposed to look like influence our happiness. Our happiness might be that we move to another country. Our happiness might be that we just want to be in a simple job, you know, because we want to enjoy our lives more. We don't want this heavy career that's overwhelming us. We want to make arts and crafts, whatever it is for us. That might just be it. But 
Honestly, society conditions us so much and then the people that we spend our time with are also in that state of fear, I guess. So if you decide to do something that's out of the norm or you leave your career and you change career and do something completely different, their own fear comes up and then that puts self-doubt into us. I mean, it's quite a vicious cycle. So if I look at my life, for instance, there are a couple of things that I did that I'm going to give you examples of because it kind of helps. It kind of touches on a couple of key things. So one of them is my relationship. The second thing is starting a business. And the third one is having a baby. Now, when I decided to marry a black man, (laughs) you know, for a lot of you, this might not sound like a big deal, but for my family, for my upbringing, for my culture, it was a big deal to marry one outside of my race and two to marry a black guy, which was a bigger deal. And yeah, <laughs> do the research, you'll see. Anyway, so that was a big step for me because there was a lot that could have gone wrong. There was a lot that I could have lost as a result of making this decision. But in the end, I did make the decision. I chose my happiness over anything else. I chose my happiness above people's judgments, including my family's judgments. I chose my happiness over losing, potentially, my family, you know, being disowned in inverted commas. And I just took the risk because I loved him. I felt in my heart of hearts, the pit of my stomach, in every ounce of my being, that this man was mine and he was he was there for me i was there for him and that only happiness could come from being together you know and i wasn't in that state of lust where you know you're kind of caught up in the oh he's so great and he can't do anything wrong and i love him no <laughs> there was too much at stake for me to be blasé about our love. There was just too much at stake. So I did go in, I did really analyze my relationship, what I was gaining from being with him, what I was giving, how we were together, our principles, our values, foundations, so much before I took that decision to go, yeah, he's he's definitely for me. One of the things that I did in the whole process of him sort of being in my life was I considered what was the worst that could happen, okay? And when I say that, I mean by telling my parents that I'm in love with this guy, I want to marry him, what's the worst that could happen? And I thought about it, and the worst that could happen was that I would lose my parents. I would never speak to my parents again. Not really something that I wanted, but it was very, very likely at the time that that's what would have happened. So I looked at what I could do to prevent it. Now, there wasn't much that I could do to prevent it, (laughs) obviously, except really just introduce him to my family and for them to get to know each other a bit more. And then the last thing that I had to think about was what was more important in my life? You know, what was more important? Now, I know this is a very difficult question to ask in this scenario because I'm essentially choosing my partner over my parents. But it wasn't so much that I was choosing my partner over my parents. I was choosing my happiness over ancient colonial cultural brainwashing. That's essentially it. And then I took it a step further and I was like, if I do this, I do set uh, what's the word? I can't think of the word. Um, you know, you kind of like set an example for others, you know, who are scared to take the step and, you know, are worried about what life's going to look like if they do lose their parents and stuff like that. And I thought, well, you know what, if I can influence others to live their lives and be happy and lead from their truth and their, their happiness, you know, essentially from love, it's not such a bad thing. And, you know, I was lucky in the end, there was a little bit of turmoil, but it soon dissipated. And that was mostly down to him, to be honest, my husband, because my parents loved him. (laughs) My dad never really had an issue anyway. He was, he was always about my happiness. And so long as he's a good man and, you know, very much about that. My mum was a bit more, how can you marry a black man? You know, (laughs) like, what are people going to say? And I was just like, I don't care what people have to say. It's not their lives. But, you know, we are all different and we all react differently. But the one thing that I will say to you in that scenario is that choosing love and choosing happiness, although it sounds very fluffy, 
in the sense that that's what I chose. It wasn't. It was a very, very considered decision. I chose Dwayne, you know, there were other men that I dated, but he was the one that I felt was right for me. And also for everything that was potentially going to come as a result of me, you know, telling my parents about him. So you've got to make considered decisions before you take risks, because otherwise you're just going to send yourself crazy with all the guilt and the fear and everything else. So that's my sort of example of taking a risk when it came to my relationship. The second big risk that I did was starting a business. And I've started a couple of businesses over the years. I think very early on, I realized that I was not created to work for somebody. <laughs> I mean, you know, I can work for somebody, but I know that it doesn't fill me with joy. It doesn't allow me to be fully myself. And that's mainly because I can't play the game. I don't know how to play the game of work politics. I really don't. I never got it right. So I've kind of accepted at the age of 40 that it's not for me. But starting a business and having a business that succeeds, you know, is they're two different things. Starting a business for me was easy because I was like, well, what's the worst that could happen? And the worst that could happen is that I have to work for somebody again, you know, and it still is the worst that can happen. When I have months where I've not signed any new clients, I go through this ridiculous cycle every single time of, I should jack this all in. I should just get a job. You know, I'm so much better with a job. I didn't have to worry about money, but that's all I'm worrying about essentially, it's just worrying about regular income, you know, but there are things that I can do to make that help me, you know, be more organized with the money when I do contract clients and, you know, all those other things. But I considered, you know, what is the worst that could happen if I started a business? And the main thing was not getting that regular income and the business failing. Then I looked into, well, what skills do I have? what skills do I have? Well, you've got 20 years in marketing. So, you know, that's got to go somewhere (laughs) in running a business. And what do I need to do? What do I need to do to start a business? And (laughs) finally, how much do I want it? Because you know what, starting a business takes a lot of the starting bit, to be honest, is the easy bit, you know, signing up to company's house or whatever. That's the easy bit. But to keep yourself going, especially in those months where you aren't having regular income, because that is normal to not have regular income. That is what was really tricky. And that was what was something that I hadn't thought about enough, I think. I think I thought there would be a lot more traction than there was. So I had to fall down to how much do I want it? And every single morning that I wake up, that I have woken up since I set up this business, I have wanted it, you know, I want it. And then when I have, when I'm working with clients, my God, after a session, I want it even more, you know, I'm so driven after a session. So all that fear and self-doubt that comes in on the months where I haven't signed any new clients, all of that just disappears in an instant once I've had a session with a client. It's insane. So starting a business, difficult, tricky, what's the worst that could happen? But by weighing that all up, I was able then to take the chance and know that the only thing that could go wrong is that it doesn't work and I will have to get a job. That's it. That really is it. And being someone who obviously has a family now, mortgage, etc., you know, having regular income is important and I do not let pride or ego get in the way. It is what it is. You know, you just do it. I wanted to try, I wanted to live my life, you know, I wanted to live my life. So that's what I do. The third one was about having a baby. So we decided, I think it was back in 2014, we had a serious conversation about, you know, our relationship, where we were going, about having a baby. By this point, I was 34. And I was like, look, I think we need to kind of move it along. You know, like, eggs are getting older. Let's look, we're together. We know we're going to be together. Let's just stop sort of faffing. And we had a conversation and we said, right, let's let's give ourselves a year and a half to get our stuff together. I wanted to bank some money and he wanted to pursue his um, studies or something. So we just, we just kind of, okay, let's give it a year and a half. Anyway, two months after that conversation, we were pregnant. (laughs) They say that God laughs when you make plans. Well, there we go. And 
when we were having the baby discussion, we sort of got to that point where we were like, what are we actually waiting for? What are we waiting for? We're waiting for this divine experience of having a hundred grand in the bank and just being free and easy. And what, 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 (laughs) what are we trying? A baby doesn't cost a hundred grand, but it was like, what are we actually waiting for? At the end of the day, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We always do. Everybody always does. You find a way to figure things out. And so we just let go. And I think that moment in letting go, because up until that point, I don't know how many years we were together by this point, seven, eight years together, we'd never once had an accident. We let go. And I'm not saying then poof, here we go, we got pregnant. These things happen. But it was more in our minds, we sort of went, what are we actually waiting for? What are we waiting for? We're grown up enough to have a child. Let's just do it. But with all of those three examples that I've given you with the relationship, the business and the baby, it was very much about making a considered decision. So I really thought about the consequences. I thought about how other people would react, how they might feel, what I can do, how I will feel if they react a certain way. And ultimately, what would make me happy? You know, would I still be happy in my relationship if I didn't have my family? And the answer was yes, because he was my future. He was my, um, I guess, my ticket to having a family and things like that. So actually, you know, it would be sad, but I wouldn't want to stop living my life because my parents' version of um, love was based on conditions. You know, that's kind of where I was. But I rationalize a lot. The Libra in me. So I hope that gave you a sort of an idea of, you know, how to take risks and chances. But the most important thing to do there is really to weigh it up. So a couple of things that you can consider if you're thinking about taking some chances or some risks in your life right now. I've put together like five points that I think can really go a long way to help you making that decision. Outside of these five points, it's really down to your fear and your own self-doubt, you know, your insecurities. And if you want to be away with them, then you have to address them head on. So you need to seek support through counseling or coaching to work through those before you attempt to take the risk or the chance that you are thinking of taking. So the first thing is information is your friend. In information. Get as much information as possible because no matter what decision you try to make, be it leave the country, change careers, start a business, have a baby, information is your friend. And this information is the information for the what you need to do, how you need to do it, as well as the potential of what people are going to say and how you're going to respond to it. Because there's a defensive response because you're not sure and you're scared and, you know, well, I'm going to do it anyway. This is what I want to do with my life. So I'm going to do it. There's that defensive response. Or you can have a more informed response and say, yeah, no, I've done the research and I want to try it out. I mean, the worst thing that could happen is that it doesn't work and I'll have to get a job or we'll have to come back, you know, And that's it. It helps you handle other people because everyone, honey, has an opinion about your life. And everyone has an opinion about people who are living their lives. And when I say they're living their lives, I mean they're taking risks, they're trying new things, they're experimenting with their career, they're having fun with it, you know, trying different things. They're living. People don't like that. You're making other people uncomfortable because they are just living. They're boring. I have a good career and I earn a regular income life. But you want to do more. You want to experience more. That doesn't take away from the regular income and having a great career. Absolutely not. What I'm talking about is taking risks and chances of things that are going to enhance your life, you know, that are going to make you feel like when you are 80, 90, 100 on your deathbed, go, I'm glad I tried that. I'm glad I sold jams and chutneys in a farmer's market because you know what? It was bloody fun. It was fun. I enjoyed it. That's it. That's it. That's all you're looking for, really. Fulfillment of a life well lived, you know, having a career, having regular income. Fantastic. But beyond that, what are you doing with your life? You know, because 
I'll tell you this, there's more to it. There's more to it than spending money. There's more to it than fancy restaurants and fancy holidays. There's actually more to life. What are you doing? (laughs) So be prepared. Information is your friend. It will help you handle external opinions. It'll help you gain more security over the choices and decisions that you're making to take these risks. Second point is to assess, assess everything. Make that spreadsheet, put your pros and cons in, but assess everything. Well, as much as you can, you know, assess as much as you can. You can never really assess and take into account every single element of something, but you can do a broad enough spreadsheet to give you some peace of mind that this is a risk that you do want to take. So definitely assess all angles, all avenues, what's the worst that could happen, what's the best case scenario, what's an in-between scenario, likelihood of X, Y, and Z happening, go for it, make that spreadsheet. The third one is learn from failure. Don't feel like failure is quitting because it's not. Failure is, that's the only way people are successful. You learn from failure. So it's okay if the program that you put together didn't work out because it just wasn't supposed to work out. There's something better for you, but you learn from it. So take from it that what was good and what wasn't good, you know that that's something that you can approve upon, but you've got to learn from it. So you decided to live in the South of France and you rented somewhere during that time. You did it for three months. And after three months, you were like, "Hmm, actually, this isn't for me. You know, in, a th- in theory, you have failed, but you haven't because you t- took the risk, you tried it out, you decided it didn't work, you came back. But what you learned from that failure was actually, I prefer to live in the UK, but I think what I need in my life are regular bouts of travel right? So what you've learned is that I can't live in another country, but I want to spend time in another country. So then maybe three months of the year you're traveling and living in another country and the rest of the time you're living in the UK or wherever you're based. But learn from your failures because that's the only way you're going to grow. Fourth thing is to be yourself. Who are you? Who are you? How many of us know who we are? So many of us don't know who we are and we're still learning who we are, but you're only going to know who you are as if you take chances, if you take risks, if you do different things, if you, you know, just step out of that box for a minute. That's when you're going to learn who you really are, you know, and if you are sitting there thinking, oh my God, I'd love to take a risk, but there's no chance I could do that. There's conditioning in there. You know, there's limiting beliefs that you've inherited from growing up, family, teachers, society at large. And, you know, we're all like the marketing that we see in the world. Capitalism is driven towards safety, security, and fear. And you're just in this awful cycle of fear, safety, security, fear, safety, security. I mean, how many of us have insurances that we never use year in year out but we pay them don't we we pay them for the just in case and the fear is so high and the cost is so high if we don't have these insurances that we blindly almost blindly do them you know we do i'm not saying that's not, that's a bad thing <laughs> safety and security is important But we learn that fear of being safe and secure as well. And sometimes it can be too far. You know, there isn't, there is always space for taking a risk, taking a chance and doing it in a sensible way where you're not totally uplifting your life or costing yourself a lot of money. You can do it in a way that is really considered. And that's what we're talking about. So being yourself is about what is it that I want? You know, what do I want to do? Do I want to try out living in Dubai for a couple of months? Yeah, I do. Why not? You know, let's ignore COVID for a minute. If that's something you want to do, what are the risks? What are the actual risks? You know, like you can always rent your place. You can always find somewhere else to live. You know, you can crash on someone's sofa. There's just a lot of things to think about, but if your heart desires it, give it a go. Be yourself, be who you are. And the fifth one, which is probably the most important one, is that you only live once. At the moment, I don't know if we're able to freeze our bodies, but even if you could, I mean, I'm sure it's going to cost us a lot. You only live once. 
that's it. You know, one of the things that I feel so much when I'm working with my clients and they're talking about sort of day-to-day stuff and we work through the day-to-day stuff and then we've created space to dream and the dreams are so beautiful and they're big and they can feel unattainable, but because they've cleared space, because they've opened up that space for more good stuff to come in, you know, where stress would normally take up so much time and space. Once you've opened that up, it's like, huh, dare to dream. I can dream. I can do this. And it'll always come down to this. You only live once. So long as you're not hurting someone, so long as you're not, you know, taking a stupid risk where you piss up all your money, you only live once. Take the risk. Live, live give it a go, try it out, try it out, just try out living for, you know, a weekend, just do things out of the ordinary. You can really make a great life by taking small risks, small chances, and, you know, I guess you can start there and then get bigger if you want to, but you only live once. If you're yourself and you know what it is you really want, then give it a go. Know that you must always learn from failure so that you can improve and grow within yourself. And just do it in a sensible way. Put a spreadsheet together. Do your research. Get all your information. Anticipate some of the things that people might say. And understand that it's their opinion, it's their projection of their own fear, not about you. If you've done your research, babe, if you've put that spreadsheet together, if you know in your heart of hearts what it is you want, doesn't matter what anyone else thinks it's your life go and live it thank you for listening to the self-care 101 podcast if you enjoyed the show please subscribe rate and review over on apple Podcasts so that other people like you can find the show for more information about the work i do head over to my website poojamaclimont.com and for daily inspiration please follow me on instagram at poojamaclimont sending love and talk to you soon